Hello, Akira here, and welcome back to the channel. Pokemon and roguelikes have been a long-standing part of my life. This is the point where the first game I remember playing is, in fact, one of the roguelite Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. While I have outgrown both PMD and Mons to an extent, it was cool to hear about a new Pokemon roguelite fan game in the form of the browser-based Pokerogue, which I streamed a few blind attempts of here on YouTube. It seems to have become a cultural phenomenon practically overnight. So today, we'll be doing a short review thereof based on my initial impressions of the game. It's still being developed, so some things are prone to change, and there is room for further features to be added. In this review, I've done my best to avoid wave-specific spoilers for Pokerogue, though other Pokemon games are fair game. Anyway, that's enough preamble, so let's get on with the video. First of all, a quick overview of how Pokerogue works. Each run of Pokero consists of waves of battle. Each battle, whether against wild Pokemon or a trainer, counts as one wave, after which you receive one of a choice of random rewards, and can spend money on various items. Every tenth wave is a boss, typically either a wild Pokemon with multiple health bars or a gym leader. Should you win, you move to a different biome and your team is fully healed. On set floors, your rival shows up. Rinse and repeat until you either beat the final boss or you die. In terms of progression across runs, the basic and baby evolutionary forms of every Pokemon you acquire are unlocked as starters in future runs. This includes both Pokemon that you catch and Pokemon that you hatch from eggs. Eggs are obtained through vouchers you get after beating strong trainers or beating the game with different starters, and then hatch over further waves. Continuing to get further copies of each Pokemon has additional benefits like extra natures, IVs, egg moves, and abilities that you can toggle when taking them with you as a starter. Overall, I'd say that it's pretty fun. It's very good for what it is as a community-made project, and I think it definitely improves on the mainline Pokemon formula. Of particular note is that every Pokemon, including Gigantamax Mons, Mega Evolutions, and Regional Forms, is available in Pokerogue, up to and including the Gen 9 DLC, meaning that you can, in fact, use your favourites if so desired. While this doesn't matter to me as much as gameplay, it's neat that there's a 2D sprite for every Pokemon. It's especially cool that many of them are animated, even beyond the Pokemon that were available in Generation 5, where this was a feature of the Pokemon sprites. Other changes made here that I like to the standard Pokemon formula are, for me, it's a big upside that there isn't any overworld roaming involved. I enjoy the fact that your team is only fully healed between different biomes, or by spending money rather than healing simply taking place between every battle for no cost. And I really like that items, such as berries and held items, can be stacked, rather than a Pokemon simply being limited to one held item. These opinions are informed by my tastes as someone who plays video games primarily, if not entirely, for the combat and build crafting thereof, and prefers healing to be limited, or at least not trivial, to obtain. As a result, your mileage may vary. Regardless of your thoughts on those aspects, they do mean that the mechanics and gameplay loop of Pokerogue are meaningfully different from mainline and spin-off Pokemon games, and other fan games, including other Pokemon roguelikes such as Emerald Rogue. So since it's as accessible as it is, requiring only a browser to play, and being playable even on mobile devices, if you're interested in Pokemon and slash or roguelikes, I recommend at least giving it a go. Still. There are several gripes that I have with Pokerogue. These fall into three main categories. Firstly, there are so many waves per run. With 200 waves in classic mode and no shorter option, each run is very time consuming compared to some other roguelites like Hades or Slay the Spire, which I know is a problem some people have with the game. Though this time cost isn't a problem for me in and of itself, See the multiple, several hour long streams I have of Embrace of the Fog, another roguelite, it becomes a problem in my opinion when in a large proportion of them, it feels like nothing of note happens, which I believe is the case here. Up until the Elite Four and Champion Gauntlet, you only fight a gym leader once every 30 waves, and your rival only shows up 6 times throughout the entire run. Even normal trainer battles happen only around once every 10 waves, meaning that the vast majority of the gameplay is you fighting wild Pokemon. Especially if you've consolidated your team, it's simply not interesting. One of my stream viewers pointed out during my second run that my team hadn't changed basically at all for around 100 floors, 
this even included movesets, as the 200 level system just serves to increase the stats of all fighters, rather than adding anything new. The game only becomes more tediously time-consuming when factoring in the egg system, where you get given egg vouchers that you can redeem for eggs typically after beating each gym leader, which then hatch after clearing a certain number of waves. While eggs have been a long-standing part of Pokémon, and so I understand why PokéRogue would want to include them, I don't like them. There's already the gacha system for pulling eggs, so why are there additional waves needed to see the results? At the very least, I'd like it if all egg vouchers could be redeemed and then automatically hatched at the end of a run. As it is, I find it weirdly time predatory. Secondly, leading on from this, build and team progression can also be really slow, far slower than I would like in a roguelike. Regarding build progression, I think this is largely because the item reward system fails to scale appropriately to your progress in each run. While you can pay Pokey to reroll item rewards, getting a full host of common item rewards on a late floor is both very possible and feels terrible. And then, while you can have several meaningful items, like multiple stacks of leftovers on a bulky recover mon, I found even seeing these items difficult to achieve. My main complaint with team progression is the biome system. Considering that the biomes are already linked by specific paths, I don't see why you can't choose which linked biome to go to by default, rather than needing the map item to do so. Or why some biomes being accessible at all is chance-based. While I can see the argument that having biome choice from the get-go without the map means that you can fairly freely pick the optimal biome path for your team composition, it can also lead to getting trapped in type-saturated zones, especially water areas and sometimes grass or bug zones. As a result, I would like it if at the least you were guaranteed to get the map at some point, like, say, being given it after the rival fight roughly halfway through the game. And then I don't like how within each 10 wave stint in the biome, you can see multiple of the same Pokémon. Combined, these things I found to greatly limit the odds of me finding a Pokémon that I would want to incorporate into my team, and thus shake up my roster. Lastly, and perhaps the biggest problem, is that I'm not really sure how well Pokémon gameplay inherently works as a player versus enemy experience, rather than a player versus player one as in competitive Pokémon. It seems like a balance that's difficult to achieve, as with the mainline series, and that applies here as well. For example, in terms of the game being too easy most of the time, there's the majority of waves being wild Pokémon fights, which I mentioned before. Then, in trainer battles, the AI is prone to baffling switching moments, which can kill the difficulty of any fights which are intended to be challenging. Then, almost as if to counterbalance these kinds of moments, at times the game can feel incredibly BS at specific points. A primary example of this is your rival later having multiple Pokémon with several health bars, especially when they have items like the Enigma Berry and Reviver Seed. This culminated in a final rival fight where I was fighting an already incredibly strong Pokémon with seven health bars. The endgame battle against Volo in Pokémon Legend Arceus, where Giratina comes back in origin form for a functionally 8v6 battle was plenty. This many health bars on an opponent who already has a full team of Pokémon is simply excessive. That brings us to the question. How could these problems be fixed? Regarding the length of the game, I honestly think that it could be slashed in half for 100 floors and a level cap of 100, as in vanilla Pokémon. You could have every 10th wave be a gym leader, have the player fight double battles against wild Pokémon for team variety, and move them to a completely new biome every time, and give better item rewards. Of course, this would have knock-on effects, with implications for Pokémon that evolve late especially, but I think it would be much more playable it could at least be a short mode option. As I mentioned before, my problem with eggs could be solved by giving the ability at the end of each run to mass redeem earned egg vouchers and have them hatch automatically if so desired. The toughest part is definitely the part about Pokémon being suitably challenging as PvE, which I don't think can be easily fixed. When I was deciding if I wanted to make a review video for this game, the only thing that came to mind immediately in terms of having the roguelike formula work for me for Pokémon is something like a tweaked version of the Battle Factory from Platinum and HGSS's Battle Frontier. Have 6v6 battles, and after each fight, choose a few of a selection of, slightly heal some Pokémon, teach a different move, switch out held items, or swap out one of your Pokémon for one of the opponents. 
However, this is an entirely different idea for Poker Oak, so it's not fixable, per se. All of this makes it sound like I'm very negative on Poker Rogue. Still, I would like to reiterate that I did enjoy my time with it, and appreciate it for what it is as a fan-made Pokemon game. Final rival battle that I cited for BS I think is actually pretty alright outside of this, and if anything, more interesting than the final boss proper. I would definitely recommend giving it a try if you like Pokemon, and think that it works well enough for the most part as a game to play while doing something else, like watching a YouTube video or chatting to friends. Still, at least currently, I think that it falls short of what I would like from a roguelike in terms of both core gameplay and build progression mechanics. As a result, I cannot personally recommend it more highly than as a fun take on Pokemon, but a lacking roguelike. I have to admit, I wasn't expecting a review of a non-Fire Emblem game to be my video making return to YouTube, but I enjoyed writing it. If you're still here, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, or at least found it interesting. If you did, then I'd very much appreciate it if you liked and slash or commented on the video, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. For anyone here primarily for Fire Emblem content, I assure you that more is made already, and for anyone who's more interested in Pokemon, that there are some Pokemon related things I want to see on the channel as well. Special thanks, of course, go to Solomon for recommending the game and for reviewing the script, and also to my friends Heroic Volplume and Nemesis for reading through it and giving pointers on it as well. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you again next time. Until then, have a good one.